Every day across the globe, thousands of tennis lessons are taught that don't make any difference at all in the game of the student. Are you taking those lessons? This video is gonna reveal exactly how to tell if you are or not. And also by the end of this video, you'll see a list of seven things that indicate you're taking bad lessons. Hey, my name is Ian. I'm the founder of Essential Tennis, where over the years, I've helped more than a million tennis players improve th through my videos, my podcasts, and my best-selling book on Amazon. Before we can say that a tennis coach is good or bad for a student, we have to know what the student really wanted in the first place. If you're watching this video right now, then what I'm about to tell you might sound completely crazy, but it's 100% true. Many tennis players take lessons other than for the reason of getting better at tennis. I know, crazy, right? But it's actually the majority of lessons that are being taught. Recently, I gave an online workshop for career tennis coaches and I actually asked them to come up with a list of value that students get by taking lessons with them. And here's what we came up with. Activity, energy spent, or for workout. Fun, entertainment, how enjoyable it is. Friend connection and socialization. Technical insight and game revelations. Therapy, talking out life problems and just a general venting session. Tactical insight, learning strategy and patterns. Meeting other peers, practice partners, and generally getting connected. Babysitting, childcare. Sounding board about their game or kind of to get hope or gain mental toughness about competing. The thrill of playing points against the pro. Hitting partner and match play preparation. And planning game improvement and progression plan for the player. Out of curiosity, which of those 12 things is your personal number one reason for taking tennis lessons? It's a little bit different for everybody, but before I started my YouTube channel, I spent many years teaching 40 hours a week of private lessons, and most of the lessons that I taught in a private country club type of setting were not for the explicit reason of game improvement or development. Let me know in the comments down below which of those things is number one for you. I'm really curious exactly who is watching these videos. So big question number one that we need to answer as we discuss this issue is what do most tennis players want when they sign up for a tennis lesson? Here's the thing, you watching me right now are not most tennis players. If you're going to the trouble of going to the internet, looking up how to get better at different skills and improve your game, then by definition, you're not an average tennis player. Your average tennis player is playing tennis because they want the enjoyment of the game. They want maybe a little bit of excitement of competition. They want to connect with friends and peers, and they want to get some exercise and do something that's good for themselves. And you know what gets in the way of all of those things? Changing your grip on your serve, or switching your stance on your forehand to be open stance instead of closed stance, and having to relearn everything about how your swing feels. That doesn't allow you to have fun. It doesn't allow you to hit the ball in the court so that your friend can hit it back. It doesn't allow you to win the matches against the players that you're beating right now. It totally changes everything when you start making fundamental improvements to your game at first. For all of those reasons, most tennis players don't sign up for private lessons for the explicit reason of getting significantly better at the game of tennis. Would they like to get a little bit better? Yeah, of course, absolutely. That's why they're taking a lesson but the truth is, the reality is, they just want a little surface polish of the habits and the skills they already have. They're not looking to blow anything else up about their game and start from scratch and take a few steps back before they take several steps forwards. Instead, they're looking to get 5% better control. They're looking to improve their power a little more than they have right now. And they want to win a couple of more games against the players they're currently playing against not completely leave their peer group and go to a completely different level with completely different players. That would take the fun out of it. The second big question that we need to ask is what have most tennis coaches become really, really good at delivering during lessons? And the answer is they've become really good at delivering what most tennis players want out of a lesson. And that's tips, a couple adjustments here and there, not completely blowing things up and rocking the boat and forcing the player to take several steps back. If you're enjoying this video and it's already been helpful, do me a favor and click that like button. It helps with the algorithm. Thank you so much. Before we go any further, let me just clear the air here a little bit. If you're watching me right now and you play tennis primarily for the enjoyment, for the exercise, for the socialization, that's great, it's fantastic. That creates the foundation for the entire game. It is a game after all. And so most people don't take it super seriously. And I'm just kind of making the assumption that if you've gone to the trouble of watching an online video about getting better, 
you're probably one of the outliers like me and like so many people that follow me. But if you're not, that's perfectly fine. I'm, I just want you to be happy. And if what makes you happy is just enjoying the activity and your, the camaraderie of your teammates and friends, it's fantastic. So this all leads us to big question number three. And that is, at the end of the day, what really makes a coach a good coach or a bad coach? And the answer is having good alignment between what the coach is good at delivering and what the student is there for. What is the value that they were hoping to get out of signing up for that lesson in the first place? And it stands to reason that if most players just want a surface level polish of the skills that they already have, and that's true, they do. And if it's also true that most coaches specialize in providing that kind of service or that kind of lesson structure, and it's true, most coaches do specialize in providing that, then if you want something different, something that goes way beneath the surface and gets at the root problems and the fundamental reasons why you're not at a full level or two levels above where you are now, it's not gonna be necessarily easy to find that person that specializes and spends most of their time on the court day after day after day delivering that kind of communication, that kind of insight, that kind of plan, those kinds of different revelations, it might take a little bit of work and effort to find that special person. To be clear, these types of coaches absolutely do exist. There's lots of incredible coaches out there that have a deep passion for helping players make gigantic changes and leapfrog different levels in their games, just like you have a passion for improving your skills. The thing is, it just might take a little bit of homework and a little bit of effort on your part to uncover them. And so here are seven different things that you should be looking for. I recommend going to different clubs, different courts in your area, just watch five or 10 minutes of different lessons with different coaches. And these seven signs are warning signs. These are coaches that are probably not gonna be able to deliver the type of insight and plan that you're looking for. The first one is cliches and catchphrases. You know what I'm talking about. Finish over your shoulder, eye on the ball, bend your knees, low to high. If that makes up the majority of the coaching that you're receiving, sorry, you're just not really getting a lot of value, at least beneath the surface. You're not gonna get down to the fundamentals of what's holding you back by just listening to repeated, regurgitated phrases and tips and tricks that you've heard a thousand times before. Number two red flag is if you watch this coach teach several different students, if every lesson is the same, all the drills are the same, all the explanations are the same, all the progressions are the same, it's probably not the coach for you. The reality is, even if it's the same level of player, and frankly, even if their problems and their mistakes are the same, the explanation and the roadmap to improvement should be different from student to student, at least a little bit. So they might have their favorite drills, but lesson by lesson by lesson, the application should be different. Number three, the coach works on five or six or seven different skills in a 60 minute lesson. This is one of my all time favorites. Tell me if you've taken this lesson before. Five or 10 minutes of like short court and like talking about like what you wanna work on. Then you spend five or 10 minutes working on your forehand, five or 10 minutes working on your backhand, five or 10 minutes working on your volleys. Maybe you hit a couple overheads, but probably not. And then at the end, you save five or 10 minutes to go back to the baseline and hit some serves while the, while the coach tosses you some balls. And that's the end of the lesson. Tell me in the comments down below if you've taken that exact lesson before. The reality is you can only make big fundamental changes to a habit that you have by spending a big chunk of time on one thing at a time. And if you're doing instructional whack-a-mole and the coach is just giving you all kinds of different things to focus on across your entire game, your whole game is probably not gonna level up very significantly. The fourth thing to watch out for is even if you focus on, let's say your forehand for the entire lesson, if the coach asks you to focus on individual different things every five or 10 seconds and you hit the first forehand, they're like, oh sweet, now make sure you swing low to high. Okay, now further out in front. And on the next time they toss you a ball, they're like, okay, now bend down, like use your knees. If you're just going around and around and around focusing on five or six different thoughts, every couple of seconds, you're not gonna get any better. That's not the way learning and improvement works. You have to spend a chunk of time focused on one change before it can actually be, be, become subconscious and you don't have to think about it anymore. Number five red flag is the coach gives you no homework. You will not make significant jumps in your level of play. If you go take a one hour lesson, you high five the coach, and then you for the next six days, you go hit with your friends and play matches 
and don't do any training in between that lesson and the next one seven days later. Are you gonna get a little bit better at the habits you already have? Probably for a while, but eventually you're gonna plateau if you don't spend dedicated focused time on your own training new and fundamentally different habits. Number six is the coach can't answer your questions directly without like laughing it off or making a joke or saying, oh, it's complicated or you can't understand it. A good coach that can really take you from level to level to level will be able to calmly and in a very easy to digest way, explain exactly why we're doing what we're doing, how it fits into the big picture and how it's gonna help you make that next step to the next level. Number seven is the coach never comes to your side of the courts. It's funny, if you watch world-class players train and practice with a coach, the coach is almost always on the player's side of the courts. And they're hitting with a ball machine or another coach or a practice partner, something like that. But when you watch a normal tennis lesson, the coach is almost always 40, 50, 60, 70 feet away on the other side of the court, trying to figure out like if you're doing it right or not. And it's very hard to give accurate, concise, and helpful information and insights when you're all the way on the other side of the court. This isn't like hard and fast rule, but a good coach is gonna spend at least a little bit of time on the same side of the court as you. So if you're watching a lesson with a coach and four or five of those red flags are present, if you just wanna have fun, get some exercise, enjoy yourself and get just a little bit better at the skills you already have, fantastic. If you love that coach, keep taking lessons from them. But if what you want is to become a significantly different and better player and fundamentally change who you are and the habits you have, then that coach is probably not gonna help you get there. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching.